Hey there, welcome to the Wings Forever podcast. Join creator, host, and lifelong Wings fan Lola Valentine as she invites you to take a deep dive into the very cool universe of Wings Club. So whether you've been a Wings fan since 2004, or you're vaguely remembering the show from your childhood, or even if you're being introduced to it for the first time, welcome. This is the Wings Forever podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Winx Forever Podcast. I'm your host, Lola Valentine. This week, we are taking a look at Season 1, Episode 6, A Mission at Cloud Tower, um, of the original Winx Club series, um, as we are continuing our Winx Club rewatch. Um, but this week, we are joined by my friend and very talented Winx artist and author in the Winx fandom, Steph, but you might know her as her handle on Instagram, Twitter, Wattpad, um, Lilac Glow Winx. Um, uh, Steph, welcome Hi. to the show. Hi, I'm so thankful to be here. I, I I was manifesting. I was like, I watching. I was watching your, your episodes, and I was like, one day, <laughs> one glorious day, I I will be here. And like you're here. When- <laughs> yes, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Thanks for for being willing to be on the show. Like it means so much to me to be able to include so many different winksers of different backgrounds and and um, talents um, on the show. So and oh my gosh, when it comes to talent, like you deliver. <laughs> you are so talented. Happy. You <laughs> you are an artist. You are a writer. You are in the middle of season two of your original Wink Sculpt story, Glow Winks. Um, um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's amazing. So, um, since this is your first time on the show, I want to give my listeners, um, kind of a chance to get to know you and your Winx history a little better. So, um, do you remember the first time that you ever saw Winx Club and what kind of got you into the show? Um, I remember it was when it first aired here, it was, uh, airing in, uh, July of 2004 and I was in second grade. And I'm not sure what episode it was, yeah. um, but I know it was one of the first episodes. And I don't know, it's just honestly the, the magic, just playing magic, I just girl yes. stuff, like magic, yes. glitter and everything. It's what called me. I, just, yes. I was also easily entertained. So it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I am so easily entertained if I like the movie. Yes. Absolutely. Then I like it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So it's really cool that you grew up with it since 2004. I mean, like myself and so many other Winxers, you grew up with the golden era of Winx, <laughs> like the truly best season of Winx yeah. Club, you know, in the franchise. So um, what do you think um, has kept you engaged with the fandom and with the Winx Club franchise all these years? I think uh, most of all, like Wings, it's because they're so apologetically girly it's so yes. it's so that they're not afraid to and they're not shy to like blast us away with neon and colors and, and glitter yes. and the outfits and, like, oh. Oh. and it's just things that are like considered girly like no boys would watch that but like i feel like many shows would like stray away from that mm-hmm. and they would uh go and make like girls like that's for girls we don't do that it's like right. the pick me girls <laughs> but exactly. um like wings just continue doing what they do like with the glitter and with the neon yeah. and with the with the magic it's just it was always present and i think that's that it's, it's lovely i love it <laughs> yeah definitely um and in the early days of winks like did you have any friends that were into winks club with you did you have like a community mm-hmm. um how did you find oh, yes. like the online community um i want to know <laughs> um i used to have my best friends at home like they lived like literally just a minute away and we always played wings as a child yes. and it was so good <laughs> i was like my friend was blonde so she was stella obviously and i was i was <laughs> and i was bloom and um my friend she was like really tall i don't know why we, we always thought techno was tall so she was always techno <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> and uh yeah we, we just played 
wings together. And then we continued in like fifth grade. We got to know another girl oh. and she was Flora and it was very wholesome. You had your own uh, wings club. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet. Well, what got you kind of into the, the online community of Winx? I started seeing a lot of Winx content again on, uh, on, I think it was Twitter and Instagram. And then I was like, maybe I should just rewatch a little, just, just to get into the groove and here we are yeah. obsessed <laughs> yes. and and then I started drawing my own fairy it was like three four years ago I don't know it was mm. like really really a long time ago and it was supposed to be the fairy of dreams <laughs> and she was like nothing she was she looks so weird like looking at it now <laughs> my drawing skills weren't on that level like wing style <laughs> why yeah um, and then I got into like Instagram. I got my own wings Instagram. Oh, yeah. And then I started like drawing. I first wanted to just like draw them, my, my characters. And I wasn't even planning on like developing a story because I know I have like a background story for everyone. Like, yeah, yeah she's, she's this, she got this, and her family's like that. But uh-huh. then it like, it grew. It, it, it just, Right. <laughs> yes. Ah. And I noticed that because fa- uh, fandom accounts are doing so much better than usual accounts. And yeah. uh, I was enjoying it so much. And that just pulled me more into like more storytelling, more more telling my, my yes. characters and my stories. And, uh, very wholesome, very wholesome community. Like I love yeah. it yeah yeah and that's what what's been really nice for me getting back into the fandom like hardcore (laughs) has been like finding those pockets where like you truly feel like a sense of community and belonging um which is what winx club is all about and it just it makes me so happy to think about like you know i i've rediscovered this you've rediscovered you know this online community and it's just like so so magical, truly. Like it's, and then you know you have people from all over the world communicating, and just over like the simple fact that we all love the same fairy show, and it's just, it's truly nothing, nothing more special than this. <laughs> the magic of friendship. <laughs> Literally, shout out My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> truly. <laughs> You're listening to the Wings for Her podcast. Well, I would um, love to, you kind of touched on it, but I would love to dive in a little deeper about um, what kind of inspired you to create your own Wings Club original story in Glow Wings. I mean, you had these original characters and did you just decide like, man, like this could be a thing? Like what, like what led to this? Um, like I shouldn't ask that. So many times, and um, I, there are so many sides to it. Frankly, I, I so many aspects. Like, first yeah. of all, it's that that being again watching uh, Wings, and and I love storytelling. And I thought I want to see my own fairies, and I want to see like not not really myself, but like yeah. things that are like made up. I love I love making things up. <laughs> yes, and just um, seeing developing like they are not like Bloom and they're not like Stella. Maybe it's a little bit of techno or whatever. And like putting it all together, it's a magical. <laughs> yes. But, and then like two, oh, I've said it, but like watching Wings and yeah. um, finding like rewatching it over and over and over and over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and as <finding>. one does. <laughs> <laughs> um, a typical afternoon. Um, and it's like you find flaws or plot lines or plot holes and you're mm-hmm. like, you know, I could, yes, you could, <laughs> you could just insert in this. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And um, it's like going deeper into things that are maybe more mature, not like rated M, not like, <laughs> right. no, no, no. It's like <laughs> no, no, not that. <laughs> grown up stuff, like yeah. just talking about your feelings more. And like, for example, in Glowings, it's also more that I talk about like friendship and like action is kind of a subplot. Yeah. But it's, it's there to to the wings magic but yes, it's also yes. a lot about like, character development and it's more about like building characters and building friendships building love or whatever it's yeah 
Yeah. I love, I, I love it. I love that so much. And, and truly, I mean, exactly to your point, I mean, loving a show like Winx Club is so funny because people that get it, get it. And then people that don't, I mean, it, yes, they don't. it is. A, they don't. Like, it's a kid's show. Yes. And like, it's, it's nostalgic for a lot of us. Yes. And like, um, it has a lot of flaws, you know, but th- like you said, like that is where, like, I feel like the magic really like can happen because the Winx Club community just goes in so well. I mean, clearly like your story is a great example of like taking this show that we've been given and being able to fill in like kind of the, the gaps that are missing in the story, you know, we can fill it in with whatever we want. And it's like, it's so um, cool. The different creative projects and creative things that this original story has really like spurred on. So um, super, super in love with um, your story, your original story and all the characters and all the scenes that you create for it uh, are just Oh, truly magical. Um, what's been sort of the biggest thing that you've learned while creating your story? I would have never, I can never thought how much time goes into creating. It's it's not only like I, I write and then I design like outfits. I design like every season they're going to get new outfits too and yes. new hair. Yes. Um, and then I have those screenshots that I have to design as well. So I've got to like read through the chapters again and I got to, okay, they're doing this. So that would be mm-hmm. a good a screenshot. Yes. <laughs> and it's so much time. And I would have never guessed that because I've like, I started, I, I wrote so much when I was a kid, but mm-hmm. I was never like this dedicated because Wings just gives me, it gives me power, the magic. Yes, <laughs> yes truly. Yeah. And yeah, it's really funny because you see people like, um, you know, that, that are in the fandom that make it look so easy just because like, you know, you, mm-hmm. you, I would consider one of them for me because you are doing so, so much. I mean, you are I'm writing the whole so thing. <laughs> yes. You're, you're writing the whole thing. You are, I mean, these, these characters are complex. They, you know, they have their own backstories and you you dive into them so well and in the season so like it's it's really cool to see you know how like I said like how a show like Wings Club even as flawed as it is can inspire so much creativity in us that I mean yeah it is the magic of of Winx that really like I mean I would have never guessed that a year later I'd be on season three of a podcast about fairies but here we are you know so it's like it's it's absolutely insane um just how we're inspired and and you know like where that inspiration comes from so like if someone would tell me that like say say five years ago like yeah. you will be writing a wings fan fiction with original <laughs> characters yes. and I would be like Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. And now it's like I cannot like live without it. It's right. it, it has become my life. I'm I'm doing the project in school for my diploma. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's and it's really like awesome. I sometimes feel like I'm procrastinating because mm-hmm. I'm like I'm writing and I'm oh, Laura does this and then this happens and I'm like, wait, I think I'm procrastinating and I'm like, no, it's schoolwork. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's so that's amazing. Um, And I love that you were able to work this original story into like your real your real life. You know what I mean? But like but like everyday life of of, you know, making in a school project, kind of like what Makey Yodel did, um, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, with um, Chronicles of Magix um, and fleshing that world out. Um, and it being first school credit, like, I mean, props to you, you know, for like two birds with one stone, like, let's go. Yes. <laughs> we call that multitasking. <laughs> uh, um, what would you say to maybe other creators um, that want to write or want to publish maybe their own story or fanfic style? Um, what, what would you say to them to maybe get started or to encourage them? I would say choose a medium and like if you like to draw, then just just draw. If mm-hmm. you like storytelling and writing, then write. And if you like comics, then do comics. And then like take a book, take a show, like 
wings, for example, and become obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I always tell like um, my clients that like, you know, passion drives passion. If you're not passionate about the thing that you're creating, how do you expect anyone else to get passionate about it with you? So um, so I, I love that. Passion does drive passion and, and find something that you are passionate about and just freaking go for it. I mean. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, you know? and then the best thing is like you, you write and then the show you're obsessed with, like Wings now, like, and then you should become obsessed with your characters, with your yes. own stuff. Yes. Oh my God. Like I could go on for hours to my friends and I'm like, you know, I got this story idea and they're like, okay, I spit it. <laughs> what is it? Please. <laughs> like really get attached to it and like bring your story wherever you're going. Mm -hmm. Like not only like notebook or something, Yeah. but just because I was at my friend's apartment and we were listening to music while she cut my hair anyways. Um, <laughs> and then there was like a song. And I was like, that is the perfect couple song, a love song for, for one of my couples. And I was yeah. like, what is the song? I need to write it down. I need to, I got like yes. an immediate idea. And it's like, it's like bringing your story everywhere you go. It's just, yeah, it's going to come. Inspiration yeah. comes and you'll just accept you, it. You like accept it, it as yes. you come. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. I love that. I love that so much. And I mean, yeah, that that's that's perfect advice, I think, because I mean, I get I get inspiration from a lot of different places. And um, and I and I love that. Awesome. Well, thanks for so much for sharing um, a little bit of your background and about yes. your original Wink story, Glow Winks. Um, super excited to dive into this uh, rewatch episode with you um, as we oh, kind yes. of dive into Winx Club Season 1, Episode 6. Um, but before that, we're going to take a short break. But before we take a short break, um, <laughs> whenever I have guests on the show, I like to do a round of rapid fire questions um, where we just kind of shoot off some <laughs> questions to you and you say the first thing that comes to your head. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> um, who's your favorite Winx member? Stella and Techno. Like, don't make me choose, please. <laughs> <laughs> favorite season? Season two. Iconic. Um, <laughs> favorite specialist or male warrior? Oh, Helia. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> favorite movie? Uh, Secret of the Lost Kingdom, without a doubt. Has to be, has to be, yes. Favorite transformation? Um, Enchantix, yeah, I think. Clearly, yeah. yes. <laughs> valid, very. Very valid. Um, favorite romantic <laughs> relationship? Um, Brandella, like, I love how obsessed they are with each other. I just, oh, I, oh my so heart. So good. <laughs> and then favorite uh, villain? Darcy, I no explanation. Iconic. Yes. 1000%. <laughs> well, that's all the rapid fire questions I had. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, um, we're going to dive into this Winx rewatch episode as we discuss season one, episode six, Mission at Cloud Tower. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Winx Corner Podcast. If you're enjoying the episode of the Wings Forever podcast, follow the show on your favorite streaming platform so that you're notified when new episodes are released. And we are back with our episode rewatch of season one, episode six, with the lovely Steph of Lilac uh, Glow Winks. And um, we're going to just kind of dive in and get started. So this episode is season one, episode six, as we mentioned um, in the right English version, is called Mission at Cloud Tower. But in the four kids version, it is called Secret Guardian. And the synopsis reads... The Winks sneak into Eerie Cloud Tower to get the ring back, um, and they find a dangerous crypt of magic archives, the most secret vault of Cloud Tower, where the Book of Fairies is kept, but a mysterious voice guides Bloom and helps the Winks escape. Um, pretty pretty accurate, pretty cool, a little wonky for a synopsis, but we'll take it. Um, <laughs> 
the episode kind of opens with uh, the girls at Althea. Bloom is searching through the Althea library looking for information about Stella's ring, um, the ring that got stolen in the last episode, Day with Disaster. Um, we They are wondering, you know, kind of like why on earth were the tricks working so hard to to get Stella's ring in the first place. Like, you know, it's just a ring that's been in Stella's family forever. Um, you know, so like what what is the significance, um, I guess. And this is also the scene where the, the Winks officially name the senior witches of Cloud Tower the tricks. Um, yeah. <laughs> which in the... in. You know, I, I've grown, obviously, to call them the tricks, but in the four kids version that I grew up with, um, they were not called the tricks ever. They were just called the senior witches of Cloud Tower. I've mentioned that on the podcast before, but um, but but the way that they, like, came to this, like, when Bloom's like, I'm sorry, I must have missed something. Who are the tricks? Like, I, ugh, I hated that. I hated it so much. <laughs> like, it was so, like... Uh, I uh, it was just very cringe and I was like can we not do this ever again <laughs> like I don't know it just seems yes. so out of place and like wonky um I I feel like I don't know I I so I wish that I liked the right English version but I just this episode was so hard for me to watch <laughs> yes that's what I noticed it's because like I watched the Ray version and the mm-hmm. Parkins version after that, it I I get I I always because I noticed they translated the German from the Ray version mm-hmm. and uh, like took the Ray version and just translated it and, translated and I noticed it, yeah. that because I watched the Four Kids version for the first time and, and? like I've grew up with like say the Ray version and yeah. the Four Kids version is so much better. Ah! And I would have never saw that. You would have never, never known. That. Yes. Yes. That makes me so happy. This is my secret <laughs> mission on the podcast is to actually like give the Four Kids version like the credit it deserves. <laughs> yes. You did an amazing job. <laughs> well, thank you. Because, oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Like, what, but here's the thing. I don't think that, I don't know. Uh, the, the, the Ray English is what a lot of other countries used as a base to dub their dub. Mm-hmm. And, and we've, we've mentioned on the podcast where like, if you go from Italian to English to a different language, a lot of things are going to get, you know, misinterpreted in the process, but probably for the better, because I think that if, if a lot of people grew up with this original right English version, like, I don't know how many weeks fans there would be. <laughs> it's, I have, I, I make notes and it's, I wrote down, this is cringe. And this is cringe. <laughs> oh, this, this is terrible. <laughs> oh, and like, I'm not here to like, you know, bash on the right English because a lot of people in the fandom do love it. And I understand why, because it is the closest to the original Italian. But to that, I say, why? Why is the original Italian this way? <laughs> like, yeah, what it's... is happening? Um, and yeah, I just, the the maturity and the skill and the, um, the, the time it took to create the four kids dub um, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's just so good and just unmatched. I feel like in any other English dub we have of the show. <laughs> um, and it's very unfortunate that they didn't get to dub all of it and I'm sad, but we will continue on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that makes me so happy. I also wonder why um, the writers in both dubs um, decided to put so much emphasis on the fact that Stella can't do magic without her ring. Um, yes. But then in subsequent seasons, where's her ring? Where's her scepter? <laughs> it it kind of just it's... disappears. <laughs> She's like, I can't transform without my ring. And I'm like, you're talking. What? <laughs> nonsense. I was gonna say I was gonna say something else, but you're talking <laughs> nonsense. Yes. Honestly, and and I don't I don't know, like I feel like that was 
I mean, it was very interesting, you know, like an interesting concept, but like also what? <laughs> I could have just continued or just drop it by saying I reached Enchantix or something yeah, and yeah. now I don't need it anymore or something like that. Something. But they didn't. <laughs> they I didn't. saw the opportunity and I did not take it. Well, you know, like continuity and, you know, rainbow are never really two words mentioned in the same <laughs> sentence. So <laughs> it's fine. Mm-hmm. They get a pass for, you know, their, their, their biggest consistency is being inconsistent. And that's fine. We all know it. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, gosh. Sorry. Um, I, I wonder, um, though, did you in this scene, did you feel that like the great dragon uh, lore was probably explained a little better in the four kids? Because I feel like the right English was it was missing a lot <laughs> um, of explanation. Yes, because I think they called it a sacred flame. And yes, then it's it's like it wasn't really clear, like what exactly is that? Right. But in the four kids, they're like, it was created directly yeah. from starlight. That was that was the like blast that created the entire dimension and the great dragon. Like, oh, like that makes more sense. Yes, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, my God. I, I would have never thought I would like to. Fo- I gotta, I gotta like rewatch everything. <laughs> Girl, do it. It is so worth it. It is the best dub. <laughs> but also in the four kids dub, um, Bloom mentioned that she was allowed to enter the restricted vault of Alfia's library, um, which is where she found a book that told her all the information about the Great Dragon, but it would only let her read one paragraph of the book um, because, you know, magic books. (laughs) But um, (laughs) yes, because magic. Leading here to discover the Great Dragon and it creating the magical dimension. Um, And then this is when Farragonda overhears her and then invites her into her office where Bloom believes that she's about to get reprimanded for literally going into a restricted area of the library. Um, but instead, yeah. <laughs> Farragonda is just like, story time. Um, <laughs> um, girl, listen. But can I just ahead. say, I yeah. love Farragonda's four kids' voice. It's, it sounds so... It sounds wise. so grandma. It sounds so yes. old and wise. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. I was just I love so her. Good. No. She literally for kids like Farragana is so iconic and um motherly. Like, yeah, like mm-hmm. grandmotherly, like you said. Like it's just very um comforting. I love it. And of course I'm very yeah. biased, but hearing that from you makes me very happy as someone that didn't okay. grow up with the dub. So yay. <laughs> So in the right English, though, Bloom goes back to the library to learn more about the Great Dragon, and that's when Miss Farragona takes Bloom into her office and tells her even more about the Great Dragon, and she learns that um, out of darkness, the Great Dragon emerged and created different worlds and spread life and light uh, throughout the magical universe, and then eventually it settled down onto Domino, um, and... That's when Bloom was like, well, Stella said that Domino is a very cold place. And Farragon is like, well, it used to be very beautiful, but then evil forces destroyed it. Ooh, And we all know what that is um, for people that are maybe just discovering Winks for the first time. This might be a, like a spoiler alert, but the show has been out for mm-hmm. 18 years, so I don't feel too bad about spoiling it. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but so Domino... Um, yeah, it was destroyed by the ancestral witches. And I wonder if this is when Farragonda started kind of piecing together that Bloom could be the lost princess of Domino. Like, I wonder if this is when she was like, hmm, you know, because in the lore, you know, Domino was destroyed and everyone with it. Everyone probably thinks that Bloom, you know, was was destroyed with domino yeah so mm-hmm. maybe this is the first time that farragon is maybe like who is this girl coming from earth there's no fairies on earth what is happening and it kind of lines up with the timeline in her head of like well this is when domino was destroyed this is when bloom was you know found on earth that sort of thing um so maybe i feel like she's probably piecing it together um at this point but can't really tell Bloom much because she doesn't know for sure. So Bloom journeys back to her room and the Winks start to uh, kind of concoct a plan of how they're going to 
um, get the ring back. And they decide that night that they're going to journey to Cloud Tower um, using the underschool tunnels they found in episode three and um, get the ring. Which, um, amazing. Like, classic... Like yes, let's sneak into our rival school and like. I love it. I love it. It's like it's like if it's trope, if it's that a trope because it 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 have to be. It have to be some kind of trope because I feel like in especially in the early two thousands, like this was a very like classic. Like oh yeah, let's sneak into you know go into like enemy territory and you know. Um, oh, oh, it's, I love it gives that. such wings vibes. I love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> So meanwhile, at Cloud Tower, the tricks are meditating, trying to activate the ring's power, but it ultimately doesn't work. Um, and Nut tries to ask them what's happening, but then Stormy sends him back to bed, kind of casting like an enchantment on him. Um, and Icy is visibly disappointed that <laughs> she can't find uh, the ring's energy and she can't access it. And... Um, this is kind of when they conclude that the dragon fire is probably not in the ring um, that they're searching for. And then, <laughs> um, and then also like Pepe comes in for co like comedic relief, obviously, because we love uh, our love little, him. our little purple Pepe. Uh, <laughs> but in the, for kids dub, this scene is actually what opens the episode. Yes. I just wanted to say that because I like I watched I turn on the four kids version and it yeah. just started with them like being there and screaming and I was like <laughs> You're like, did I start it at the wrong spot? Like <laughs> yes. Because it's like so much just like kind of erased or like pushed back or it's so weird. It's it's yeah. too it's too much for me, but like then again if I watched that for the first time and not the right. Ray version, it's, yeah. I would be like, why is that coming first? Like it's, it's the it's, mutual yeah. strangeness. Yeah, definitely. Like it's, it's very interesting rewatching. Cause this is probably the first time I've ever rewatched the right English, like all the way through of this episode. Um, and it was, it was very interesting seeing all of the scenes that four kids did rearrange and cut out. Um, and I feel like, I mean, to the four kids dub, it did, um, it, it worked, you know, um, it did shorten the episode significantly. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> shout Definitely out American good. media entertainment. Yeah. Um, but, but it, it did shorten it a lot and it, um, but I don't know, it was, it was interesting because we don't get a lot of episodes until like maybe near the end of the series or the series and in, in season one, um, where the tricks open the episode, you know, like. That it was it was really cool to me that like four kids took that approach of like, oh, what if we open the episode with the villains? You know, like I don't know. Yeah. Like it's just very <laughs> uncommon and like very like cool because the last the last episode we left off, you know, Bloom is like, We're gonna get that ring back, you know, and then the next episode, where's the ring? It's with the tricks. So it's just I don't know, it's just very it, um cool. It does fit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So in the tunnels, uh, Bloom is leading uh, the Winks to Cloud Tower as Nut <laughs> is cleaning up the witch's mess. Um, and the tricks say that they're journeying into the woods. Um, and the Four Kids dub is really cool. They um, mentioned that they were going to consult the Dark Force about the ring. And I was like, ooh, girl, what's the Dark Force? Like, what are we talking here? You know, like, who are we consulting? I Those think. secrets. Yes. I think that in, like, my headcanon would be, like, they're probably consulting their ancestors. Like, they're probably consulting yes. the ancestral witches about it. Which, yikes. <laughs> um, that's scary. Oh, God. I'm the worst. <laughs> um, so the tricks are journeying out to the woods to consult this dark force about Estelle's ring. And the Winks make their way into Cloud Tower and up to the Trix's room as the Trix had just left. Um, the four kids' dialogue in this, like, in this scene was so much better, in my opinion. I do feel like a broken record saying that, like, the four kids' dub dialogue is so much better because it just, it is! Like It was so weird because um, when, like, in the Ray version, like, I, I always watched it in German, so it's like... Yeah kind of the translation of that but it's in english it's even it's even worse, worse. I, I it's like when techna talks about the voodoo doll there's the 
That is the worst moment of the entire episode. Died because she goes, "Ha, huh, really? They're just sick." And I'm like, "What <laughs> <laughs> just happened?" <laughs> Like, I gotta say, German, like, dubs are very good. Like, they're really, oh, yeah. they, they're doing very good work. They, they're good. They're good. I mean, it's not it. to like, mention, like, y'all have the, like, most iconic, like, song, like, theme song opening ever. Like, the best of the franchise, yes. probably. And <laughs> it's, it's so true. good. Like, but, but yeah, I think that when it comes to the right English and other dubs, you know, that use the right English as a source material, I think that it really comes down to the voice acting and the voice directing because not every dub has to be this bad. Like, I'm convinced. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I've heard the the Italian, you know, like, voice acting. I've heard the German voice acting. They're good. You know, they're actually <laughs> good. I don't know what the Cineloom directors were doing, but it wasn't directing. I don't know. It wasn't great. <laughs> They were playing. <laughs> they, oh, oh, so, it's also, yeah, uh, scary. I see voices and like, I, I don't know. It's everything is, some, it's sorry, right, right, right. It's, it's a mess. It's, I can't even comprehend that this is the English version that people like and prefer. And I'm like, I would, I would re, I would watch and I don't say this lightly. I would watch the Nickelodeon dub over this. <laughs> Yikes. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, but in the four kids version, um, as soon as they uh, got into the witch's room, they cast a lost and found spell uh, to help locate yes. Stella's ring. I wrote that down because I, I like, I watched the four kids version and it was yeah. like, they, they did a spell that's so that's so clever because it's like cluttery it's dirty apparently yeah <clears throat> like they're doing this this spell it's uh, i don't know i love it it's it's so innovative yes who would have thought it's, not me <laughs> i know right it's like oh cool yeah they're fairies of course they're gonna use their magic to help locate this ring like it's it's one of my favorites and when and to your point like this the voodoo like doll like section of of this scene in the right english is very cringe but Mm. in in the in the four kids dub like it's 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 hilarious and i love it because techno's like oh look they're into voodoo i wonder who this is poor girl (laughs) yes Okay, and then, like the same. <laughs> yes, and then and then Musa comes out with that like stick, and she goes, "Well, look what I found. I wonder if this is for cheerleading." And yeah. then it like was like a spiky club, and she was like, "Oh!" And then <laughs> Flora tells Techna, "Well, I wouldn't play with that doll." <laughs> <laughs> and Techna's like, "Yeah, you're right. Voodoo is so junior high." <laughs> oh my god, I I love it because. It's. I was. I was shocked. I can't say I was shocked about the dialogue changes, but then again, it made them like a little sassy, a little like we're here, we're we're looking for things, but but also also snooping through their stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's very funny because yeah, like you're in your arch nemesis like place of dwelling. Like you're you're yeah. <laughs> of course you're naturally curious of like what what other stuff do they have in here? You know, like I love that. <laughs> I also love that that when everyone was like watching or not watching like, like searching and like what are they doing? And Stella's just looking through the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> as she should. Like yes, she, our Stella. As she should. <laughs> Uh, so when the Winks finally find Stella's ring, she puts it back on and their mission is accomplished. So they start to leave, but Tecna can't open the door to the tunnels. Um, and so they have to find a different way out. Um, and the four kids dub that was um, left out because Bloom was like, follow me. She wanted to check out one more thing while they were there. Bloom had these like ulterior motives in the four kids dub. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, let's get Stella's ring, but also let's stop by their library real quick. <laughs> yes. Um, so funny. But so they end up in Cloud Tower's archives, and this is when um, the head witchstress, as she is referred to in the right yes, English dub, I, I love it. That. 
I love it. Griffin is alerted to their presence through her magical security crystal ball, which I love. Um, and uh, they decide to um, uh, like spend some time in the archives when Griffin, you know, sends them kind of a scary thing to like leave her school. But meanwhile, um, in the archives, Techno wants to leave, but Bloom insists that they stay so that she can find out more about herself because for some reason in the archives at Cloud Tower, there is a book for every fairy and witch in the universe ever. And then it's, this is, is never mentioned again. <laughs> first of all, it's never mentioned again. And it's so much like, say, it's like the whole, let's just say whole Cloud Tower, whole Althea. That's like, what, 600? Thousand students alone, at least. Who does this? It's just the schools. It's just. It would make sense that it was. It would be a a, like witches' archive. Yes, but why fairies too? Why are fairies also included in this? Like for the drama of it all, so that Bloom can like you know go into Cloud Tower later in the season to like break into Cloud Tower again. Like I don't know. It's just. It's not giving what it meant to give. I think. (laughs) Yes. Why? <laughs> they were like, like they were slowly feeding into the. We're giving, we're giving her things to just be the main character. <laughs> yes, yes, honestly, yeah. They were like, oh, but Bloom finds a book about herself with her name all, like plastered on the front. And it's like, uh, I don't know, like. You had me until then, Rainbow. Like, you had mm-hmm. me up until this point. I was like, even as a kid, I was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> Where, where's the book about humans? <laughs> I know. Where's the book about humans? And also, like, later in the season, spoiler alert, like, um, Griffin talks about how she didn't know that the tricks when she admitted them into the school were the descendants of the ancestral witches. When, if you had access to a book about them in your archives lady why don't you just look it up? why don't you just look it up oh my gosh so yeah there's a lot of plot holes here we're gonna move mm-hmm. on but like mm, what the heck <laughs> um so bloom opens the book with her name on it which griffin had enchanted to scare her and freak them out and make them want to leave um which it successfully does um so uh but then in 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 that whole sequence she also um makes the door disappear to the archives so they can't get out Ugh, and techna's line in the right english dub here just killed me because she was like like I don't want to be dramatic but I think I don't know something like that it was just so like I hated it (laughs) I like the more I think about it the more it's like like I say the voice actors are like good in German especially but like in English in in right especially in right English yeah like what? Mm. Yeah, because in the four kids dub, she was like, "The wall is hot. Someone must have used a dark spell to make the door disappear." Like, okay, that's great. That is techno logic. That is yeah. we love it. That is probably yeah. right. <laughs> that, exactly. Oh my gosh. Yes. So um, to get out, they all transform um, and they escape the archive room, but they learn that the tunnel that they used to arrive into the archive room um, had changed thanks to Techno's photographic memory. Um, And they're suddenly surrounded by spiders, all these gross looking little uh, creepy crawlies. I hate these. Um, (laughs) uh, The girls, yikes. Yikes. The girls decide to make a um, magic barrier and um, the spiders like get all like burned up by them, but then not for long because then they kind of like multiply almost. And it's very gross. I hate spiders. If you can't tell. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Me too. Me too. Uh, um, But the spiders begin to make a breach in their barrier when LOL, the winks remember that they can fly. They're fairies. They can fly. (laughs) Oh my God. It's, It's the, it's the, I know spoiler, but like, in season three where they're like falling down and they're like 
Yes. Fly. They're like, I'm My sorry, God. you forgot to fly. You forgot you have these big A wings. <laughs> like, what <Yes>. on earth? <laughs> I'm dying. That's so funny. Like, yeah, I, I feel like that's where, like, you know, the 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 human side of the writers come in. They're like, oh, and they can't escape because why? Because why? <laughs> Tell me. Go <Come> on. <laughs> yes, I want to know. Yes, yeah, so funny. Um, but then uh, while they um, are flying up in the air above the spiders, Flora conjures this large beast um, to help eat the spiders and take care of them. Um, but then it like disappears and they're left with like this like goo stuff on, you know, you on the floor and, mm. <laughs> um, in the four kids version, the Stella, first of all, I love, love, love the Stella in the four kids version. She is iconic. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We stan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> Um, but she, in the four kids version, she flies down and she goes, ew, they're turning into mud. And then she goes, note to self, book a mud facial treatment. And it's so funny because I'm like, of course, Stella is like trying to like bring comedy and like, you know, lightheartedness into this scene because that's what she does. That's why I love Stella so much. Yes. She's, she's iconic and we love, um, but then, the spider gooey remains ew um all like come together and like make this big gross slimy monster that decides to like you know go and attack the winks and so they're flying trying to get out of cloud tower trying to get away from this monster when they reach a dead end they're like well crap what are we gonna do we're gonna have to fight it um it's so funny so they they defeat this monster um you know converging their powers all at once and then um, Tecna has her little shield that shields them from all the gross, oh, probably, like, explosion. I know. It's so iconic. Like, this pose for me um, of, like, all the girls, like, hiding behind Stella yes. or behind, behind, hiding behind Tecna. Um, she, like, it's so iconic because in the um, in the four kids DVDs for the I don't I don't know if this is true for other dubs, too, but in the in the DVDs that I had growing up. Um, the credits always rolled over that picture um, of the girls. I have behind no Tecna. idea. Uh, it is so iconic and like but, nice, like uh, yeah, so nostalgic. But the Winks defeat the monster, um, and they are like backed up against this um, locked door that <laughs> Techna just like brute force like opens, <laughs> which yeah. I oh absolutely God, I love loved that. that. <laughs> it's like kicking me down, like you you. She's Do such a job. badass. I, I yeah, it. like Tecna in this episode, she's amazing. Like I love her. Um, it's it's it really like shows like her, you know, her personality, her strengths, um, and even like you know what she contributes to the Winx Club. Like she's strong. She shielded all of them from all the gross goo monster. She like is the one that's like able to recognize like whether like the tunnel that they were in is changing, you know, and stuff. Like it's, it's Techno is such an asset, and I know that she's like we we all know that she's an underrated character, and that for oh, that yeah. like. The, seri- the franchise is just, like, awful to techno, but we love her and we stand a technology queen. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> While they're in this room that techno just, you know, <laughs> brute force broke into, um, a Bako monster comes out, which in the 4Kids dub, Misa calls a puncture beetle because it has, like, a big, like, stinger on it or whatever. I don't know. It looks scary. I don't like it. I don't like all the bugs in this episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Do not like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but Stella, um, is like, I'll take care of it. And then her magic backfires and actually catches the whole room on fire. So, um, it's, it's hilarious because in the four kids dub, the, the line was, uh, Flora like said, um, Stella, I could have like conjured a beetle eater. Look at all this fire. And Stella goes, <laughs> um, I always say when it comes to bugs, you can never have enough fire. <laughs> um, pyromaniac. <laughs> yeah, it's like, girl, what? Stella, are you okay? Excuse me? Yes. Do you need help? <laughs> Do you need help, ma'am? <laughs> Amazing. Oh so the room catches on fire. They're surrounded by these flames. Um, and Bloom, obviously, she absolutely should be feeling responsible 
for getting them into this mess because she is the she reason did. why <laughs> this is your fault, girl. <laughs> She's like, wow, this is all my fault. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> my great minds think alike. Like, <laughs> I was watching the head and she was like, it was all my fault. And I was like, yes, bitch, it was. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> recognizing that so funny like glad you said it because we're all thinking it <laughs> um but in this introspective moment uh for bloom is when she hears a voice calling to her a strange voice calling to her which we eventually spoiler alert uh learn that it is um it belongs to daphne uh the nymph that has been calling to her in her dreams um and she allows daphne to lead her um to a way to find um a way out of the burning room. So the Winks all follow Bloom back to safety um, and journey back to Althea, where uh, they are met by Griselda, who stops them um, and takes them to Farragonda's office. And so Farragonda learns about what they did last night, um, and Griselda suggests that uh, they have their powers removed. And so Farragonda revokes their powers and grounds them. Um I love this epi- this this episode and this this ending of this episode for a couple reasons because, I mean, as as a longtime Winx fan, I always am like, well, the Winx always get away with stuff, da da da, all these things. But like yeah. looking back mm-hmm. on the season, I'm like, no, they didn't. Like they got reprimanded for this, and good, they should. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like just <laughs> because they're they the main should. characters, <laughs> yeah, just uh-huh. because they're the main characters doesn't mean that they get away with everything. And I love that. They didn't, you know, in, in this episode. So shout out Farragonda and Griselda, you know, <laughs> coming down hard with the hammer. <laughs> oh, my God. I want, want to say that I watched the Ray version and like the German dub. They say, uh, yeah, we should do that. We, we should like take away the, their powers. And mm-hmm. they're like, you wouldn't do that, Farragonda. <laughs> She's like, there are a few things I wouldn't do. <laughs> like, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I noticed that I watched the Four Kids version, and it has a name. And she's like, "We should like do punishment for D." Yes, and yes. that they used it once, and was like, "For who? Who fucked up like that?" <laughs> yes, honestly, like we're we're only using this once, but literally they sneak out of Alfia like so much in the series, and this is the only time that they like. <laughs> Are punished for it. I don't know, but like, yeah, it's it's hilarious. Um, and then Farragona like casts the spell, and she like has a whole incantation oh, in the four kids. I love this. <sighs> this, I don't know how to say it. it's like the, the effects and the, the yes. how they like like flying. when they lift off the ground. It's so oh, theatrical. And I love this. this <laughs> how you can see the magic. It's like <laughs> yes, slurping out of them. It's, oh. I love that. <laughs> yes. I always love that. Oh, it's so good. Um, it was very interesting to me watching this back as a seasoned Winxer now. Um, and I had never really thought about this until until rewatching this episode. Farragonda says she removed their powers. Um, but I like to believe that Farragonda just made them believe that she removed their powers. Like without spoiling anyone for like the wings, but yeah. it's the thing... I think uh, the, the headmistress, the new headmistress, uh, Florence, does that too mm-hmm. for like school purposes, for class purposes. And she's like, it seems like they're gone, but as soon as you unlock Charmix, you get them yes. back. Like yeah, it's yeah. like an activation again. And um, yeah, so it's like it's made to believe that they're Gone, yes. but they're not gone. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, yeah, like these little fairy freshmen don't know the difference. Like, you yeah, know, like it's, it's, yeah. And even in the in the last, you know, part of this season, um, when Daphne shares with Bloom that like no one can truly take your powers from you. Yes. Like, spoiler alert. Um, but like, yeah, like that is <laughs> that's a huge one. Um, but, <laughs> sorry. Oh, <no. laughs> But, but yeah, like, so, so I think that, um, and this kind of plays into, um, fate, the Wink Saga a little bit too, because I think that, and this is just my headcanon, that, you know, she cast probably a memory spell or like mind fairied them, <laughs> you know, into like, you know, toying with, you know, how they, um, accessed their powers. So I think that that's really cool insight. So, 
Yeah. Oh, well. So in back in their room, um, Stella was talking about how, you know, like, oh, we sh- like we should I think we should just veg out and da, 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 all the stuff. And and then Bloom has a weird like, I don't know, thing where she says, like, I just say winks. And then I it was mm, I don't know. It was if you, so weird. It was so weird. <laughs> and I hated it. Ah. And I love I love the little parkets ending because it was like she's just like on the windowsill. Mm-hmm. It just she's just relaxing, and yeah. then it ends, and I'm like, I'm so glad she wasn't like Wink. winks. <laughs> yes, same. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I know the forecast stuff was very good about alluding to like the dangers of them not having access to their powers, and it was very um, ominous. It was very like, oh no, what's going to happen? And like it yeah. leads to the anticipation for the next episode, which they did a really, really good job of, and I love um, because yeah, Bloom's like guys like. This is bigger than, like, us having to do homework without our powers, us, you know, all that. She's like, the witches are going to learn that we fe- that we got the ring back, and then they're going to come and get us, and we don't have our powers. And that's what scares me. And I'm like, girl, you were right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so... Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, that is the end of the episode. Um, So many good moments, so many major events that happen. um, And we're going to talk about those major events right now. Um, First of which, Bloom, this is the first time we ever learn about the great dragon from Farragonda. And um, love it. Love the lore. Love all the things that Mm -hmm. the fandom has done with the lore of, of Winx Club and of the great dragon. So... Um, so yeah, that is the first time it's ever mentioned. This is also the first time that Wings Club has ever visited Cloud Tower, um, which is which lol, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm so such a nerd. Um, amazing, but it's it's funny because like Cloud Tower is such a like pivotal like you know like um, point of focus in in this. Uh, season and in later seasons too but like uh, this is the first time we ever get to see inside a cloud tower kind of get to see like the winks interacting with cloud tower and it's I don't know cloud tower is so iconic and cool and I love it Um, also major event Stella gets her ring back shout out (laughs) Um, but but as well this is the very first time Bloom ever like has her first encounter with Daphne um, she was in a high, you know, tension situation. Daphne comes to her in um, not a premonition, but like kind of, you know, like this inner voice. Um, you know, it could be magic. It could be something, you know, intuition. Techna calls it in the in the four kids dub. But um, but yeah, it's this is this, you know, ominous voice that Bloom just hears. And we don't know who it is yet. And it's really magical and cool. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the big major events that um, I spotted uh, other than the Winks. Also, um, and this is a fun trivia fact, this is the first time that um, all of the Winks tracks form together all at once in the season. Or, yeah, yeah. In, in the series. And it was like, it's, I, I didn't notice it because it's like, yeah, it, it happens so many times. It's right. like, it was the first time in episode six. And it was like, it's Which so is long. crazy. I, it's so long. Yeah. Because in season, in episode one, only uh, Stella transforms. Episode two is um, only. Everyone transforms? Everyone except transforms Bloom. except for Bloom. Yes. And right. then episode three, only Bloom transforms. Yes. And then episode four, no one transforms. <laughs> and then episode five, all the girls transform except for Stella because she's captured. Right. And then episode six, finally we get a group Aww. transformation and it's glorious. <laughs> Absolutely. This is also the first time of many <laughs> that the Winx Club are punished for leaving Alfio without permission. <laughs> LOL. Like you get punished so much. Why are you still? Why are you, why are you, you still leaving it? after the curfew? And 
why you? Why would you do that? <laughs> like, literally, like, I think that in season two, they literally create the magical barrier around Althea just because of the Wings Club. Like, they have to. Like, you know, like, the rule breakers that literally, like, they are the reason why we have rules in place. Oh, that no. is the Wings Club. <laughs> I bet they have like they have like meetings and they're like God, God gracious, have oh my God, we gotta do something. We gotta so we gotta put yeah, we gotta put more like you know rules in place to keep these girls from behaving. Uh, yeah, it's and like really, they're probably just ruining like the Alfie experience for all their other classmates because of all these rules that are having to be put in place because of them. Oh no. <sighs> So funny. I can imagine oh my that, God. like, someone should, like, there would be, like, a good plot point. They, they, they could just, they could, they could edit. It would be nice. Are you familiar with the My Little Pony franchise at all? Just a little, like, really, really little. <laughs> in one of the seasons later on in, in French of His Magic, um, there was a huge, like, fan service episode where it was all about just the side characters and, like, the background characters. I would have loved that for Winx Club. I would have loved an episode that yeah. centered around, like, Amaryl and Priscilla and Francine, you know, like, all these, oh, like, Francine, fairies. Let's go. Oh, shout out, Francine. <laughs> like, would have loved, like, something, like, where, like, they they must all hate the Winx Club. Like, not all of them. We know Amaryl does, for sure. But, like, you know, like, they're because they're probably just like, ugh, the winks. You know, like, whatever. It's so funny. <laughs> it would be so funny that they're, like, sitting on, like, their balcony and, like, the girls are getting caught and, like, <laughs> my friends seem just, oh, yeah, again. <laughs> I guess. Yes. yes, exactly. Like, I can only imagine, like, uh, who, like anyone listening to this, if you want to, like, write that, like, just, like, mini episode, <laughs> like, hit me up. Um, <laughs> Please. Oh, yes. Also, um, even though Bloom has used her magic before in her civilian form, this is the first time that she ever uses her powers in her fairy form because she doesn't use her powers in um, episode uh, three, against the witches she only flies <laughs> that's yes, the only yeah. thing she learns how to do and then in episode four she um decides that instead of fighting the witches it'd be you know more advantageous of her to give them the ring and save stella so she doesn't use her powers at all then um so yeah this is the first time that she uses her powers ever which is wild oh, crazy <laughs> Um, and then the last uh, little tidbit of uh, trivia I have, um, the four kids dub used the uh, scene of them walking back to Alfia from Cloud Tower. Um, that little like walking scene um, is a very big like um, like scene used in a promo DVD that was in the uh, the season one uh, DVDs that were included in the season one dolls. Um, the Mattel dolls, which is uh, so iconic. I watch those over and over. <laughs> so like whenever I see that little like scene of them walking back to Alfia from Cloud Tower, I'm just like, ah, nostalgia, <laughs> like just a I wave of nostalgia. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so that's the end of the episode. At the end of these rewatch episodes, we are deciding what is the Winx Forever moment. What is the most Winx-tastic, Winx quintessential, like Winx moment? Um, and I don't know. What what do you think that w- would be a Winx Forever moment for you of this episode? I think it would definitely be when Daphne is talking <gasps> to Bloom. Yes. yes, it has to be, it's right? Just- like. What is that? What was that voice? What, what? Why is she helping? Like, right. who? What? <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the the nostalgia, the intrigue, the yeah, the mystery. Like, it's it's all there, and and it's all the reasons why we love season one of Winx Club because it is Bloom on this journey of discovering why she even is a fairy, and we have this crazy ominous voice coming to her. We're like. Oh, a piece to the puzzle, you know, like it's so like, yeah, I love it. Yes. I I would agree. I would agree that that is probably the Winx forever moment. If I had to pick one that is not bloom centric, (laughs) um, I I would, I would pick, um, the, like them battling the monsters in cloud tower. Um, I, I love that, like them battling the little like goo monster. Um, but it's, but it's very Winx and it's very like, uh, I love it. It's very cool. So, Awesome. Well, that is the end of this episode. Wow, Steph, thank you so much for joining us um, on this journey, um, this episode. Um, 
I want to want to give a shout out to you because you were featured in the um, the Enchanted Winx oh. zine as an artist. Oh, yeah. So what? congrats. You have two pages, two full pages of your art in there. Uh, they are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Um, and I just oh, I love um, getting to support my art friends and in the things that they do. So um, congrats. That is I love your pages and it. it's it's such a good like collaborative like um yes, project you. so i absolutely love it um tell our listeners where they can find you and your art and your amazing original winx fanfic glow winks well on instagram you can find me uh on lilac.glowings on twitter what's a little i have one account it's glowing fairies yes but my main account is steph lilac just everything together mm-hmm. um which is more of a, it's, it's like personal, everything yeah. personal, but it's also wings. So if you want to follow that, you can do that yeah. too. And you can find my story on Wattpad under lilac underscore glowings. Awesome. And I would love to see you there. <laughs> yes, for sure. Please, please, please go check it out. She's in the middle of season two of her story. So um, I have yet to catch up. It's literally like my treat. Like when I finish a like a, a task or something, I'm like, okay, I get to go like read, you know, glowing oh. now. And <laughs> I love it so I'm much. So, happy. <laughs> so yeah, please go check her out on all the places. I will link all of her links in the description below. So be sure to connect with her on all the socials. Um, until Bye. next time, uh, this is the Winx Forever podcast. Bye. <laughs>